In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. Christus Anisti. Christ is risen. Today is the last Sunday before the Feast of the Ascension, and then after that we have one more Sunday, and then we'll celebrate the Feast of Pentecost in this Holy 50 Days. <clears throat> and today's Gospel, in order for you to understand the context, this is in John chapter 14. We know that Christ in John chapter 12 said his last words to the people. He preached his last words to the multitudes. And then John chapter 13 to John chapter 16, which you're going to see in the next few weeks of Gospels, are the last words that Jesus had to the disciples. And they were getting mentally prepared because they kept on saying that the Son of Man is going to be crucified. And they were expecting that, like, everything's going to change. Everything's going to be terrible. When, when Christ leaves us, we're going to be alone. Our teacher is gone. Our father is gone. Or everything, our best friend is gone. And so Christ is trying to set the tone. And he says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You see, they didn't understand, they had a very short-sighted vision of what God's plan was for them. And I think this is the struggle of many of us. Many of us, we get to a point where God goes and goes and things are good and everything's working out and glory to God. And all of a sudden, something bad happens, bad news, something that doesn't meet my expectation for life. I have dreams, God's not fulfilling them. And then all of a sudden, what? We start to lose faith. As a priest, the hardest thing to do is to talk to somebody when a very bad thing has happened to them and I don't have an answer. Just tell them, have faith. And that's the last thing they want to hear. Abuna, you're not in my position. You're not going through what I'm going through. You don't understand. Which is why Christ in this passage says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If he were to summarize it, he's saying, I am the true way of life. Following me is the way to life, and you have to trust in that. Because many of us feel like, well, okay, I'll follow him, but what happens when things start getting tough? Where is God? And this is what happens, is that when things start to get tough in our life, the devil puts his arm around us and he looks and he says, where's God? We say, you're right. Can't God control this bad situation? Can't God just fix it? Can't God just make it go away? Of course he can. Then God doesn't love me. And Jesus is preparing the mind of the disciples. Just because I'm going away doesn't mean that it's all over. Trust in me. It doesn't mean... That because I go away, that everything that I've been telling you about the kingdom of God isn't true. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going in he to heaven to prepare a place for you. Because once I enter, that's it. The doors will stay open for each and every one of us forever. So he says, believe in me. A lot of people come to me and they say, Abuna, like, I'm afraid to take that next step with God. Why? Because... I know that everything is going to go sour. I know that I'm going to have to sacrifice all these things that I love. And I know, and I know, and who's telling them this? Again, devil's got his arm around our shoulders and he's saying, yeah, it's going to be tough. You follow God, it's going to be nasty. You keep going, it's going to be difficult. And so we begin to say, you're right. This is good enough. A little bit of God, a little bit of the world. Perfect. Perfect situation. He's saying, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'm going to make that your home. Heaven is your home. And I'm going, you have to trust me that the deal is done. You just got to follow. I am the true way of life. If you follow me, you'll get there. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. Question. Do you believe those words? Do you 100% believe those words? That if I follow Jesus all the way, 
that I'm going to experience the abundant life? Or do I feel like deep down inside, if I follow him all the way, I'm going to be walking on a cracking bridge, right? That, that, like, it's going to be very difficult to get there. And I think many of us, we get there and we say, I don't know if I believe. Because our faith gets shaken because we don't know the truth. We don't know the truth. We don't know that Christ is the only way. What you're going to hear in, in next week's gospel is that in this world you will have tribulations. That has nothing to do with me. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. I'm not putting all these obstacles in your life to make your life difficult. That's not me. In this world you have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I overcome it. Things are going to be tough in this life. Things are going to be shaky. You're going to go through difficult times. But Jesus is saying, I am the true way of life. Don't be deceived that there's any other way to life. Don't be deceived that a little bit of this will give me some life. It's not going to work. I am the true way of life. But Abuna, I don't know if I kind of know the way of Jesus. I know over here, and I know how over here makes me feel, my relationships, my this, my sins. I know how these things make me feel. These are familiar. And that's why Jesus starts it out by saying, let not your hearts be, a trouble, be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Believe. Believe everything that I've been telling you isn't a joke. Nothing breaks my heart more than when we kind of think that not everything Jesus said was true. Not everything Jesus said is meant for the blessed life. When you read the book of the Ephesians and what Christ is trying to tell or what St. Paul is trying to tell the people of who we are as the people of God. That you are God's very own. And that God desires to give you an eternal dwelling of endless joy and peace. Start living it from now. Because if you don't start living heaven from now, then you're not going to make it. The heavenly life is the way of Jesus. You want to go to heaven really bad? We all want to go to heaven really bad? There's only one way. It's the way of Jesus. And the whole world has to know it. Every soul, every knee that needs to bow before Jesus needs to know the only way to heaven is through Jesus. Not, Jesus can get me through my temporal problems. Yeah, I got a problem, I'll pray. He's saying, I am paving the whole way to eternity. Follow it. Don't go to the right, don't go to the left. The world is tricky, and the other side is the devil. There's one way in the middle. It's the way of Jesus. I want you to ask yourself, St. Paul tells us that we are ambassadors of Christ. He says we are ambassadors of Christ. We represent Christ here on this earth. And St. Paul says in Philippians that our citizenship is in heaven. Do you live your life carrying yourself about as a heavenly citizen? You know an ambassador, once an ambassador goes to another country to represent their home country, so if you and I are ambassadors, we are to represent our home country, which is heaven. And we are there to represent Christ himself. Can the ambassador go and just buy a home in this foreign place and just start going to the beaches, start enjoying life as if? No. The ambassador is there on a mission. So the ambassador, the U.S. ambassador in China is there to make relationships between America and China. He's there on a mission. He's not there to enjoy the beaches or this. He's there to do a mission, and he's going home. And we can't get distracted. I remember in Zambia, the, the young children that 
when I went to visit, they came and they sang a song. And they said, This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, O oh Lord, what shall I do? If heaven's not my home, what should I do? You see these kids coming with no shoes, no socks, ripped clothes, and they're saying, it's okay. What we're living in here, that's not my home. It's temporary. I can get through this time barefoot with no shoes. But if heaven's not my home, oh Lord, what shall I do? That is the theme to every single one of our lives. This world is not your home. Your home is somewhere else. Don't get too caught up. Start investing here. Start putting all your time and your energy and your emotions here. Because one day it's going to end. And you've made all your investment here. But you need to invest in the kingdom of God. You need to say, I want to go just like somebody who's about to buy a house starts planning, okay, the paint and it's going to look like this, and I'm going to put the pictures over here, and I'm going to own one of these, and I'm going to have one of these. And you start saying, okay, we're going to prepare for this home that we're going to live in. We're just going to make this place our own. Is heaven your, o- your own? Is heaven your home? Is that your citizenship? Or is heaven like, what's out there? Who cares? Don't think of ho- as heaven as a place. It is a place, but don't think of it as a place. Think of heaven as the place where you are going to live in eternal peace. And Jesus didn't just want the disciples to look forward to 60 years from now, when I die in 50 years or 30 years or whatever. When he gave us the church, he gave us heaven on earth. And the church is the place where we enter into this deep fellowship with Christ to give us just a taste of what heaven's going to be like. Like, is it going to be really long? Is it going to be just really long and and smoky? Like, is it going to be, what is it going to be like? It is going to be a place where young people say, well, they always tell me heaven is going to be like praises. That sounds boring. No, no, no. It's not, we're all going to sing like hymns and okay, you say the right side, we'll say that's not how it works. When you get to heaven, everything that you see is going to invoke praise. And then the next second, it's going to invoke more praise until forever. Because everything that you're going to experience is just going to invoke praise in you. Does this world invoke praise in you? Does this world cause you to want to praise all the time? Then why are you getting comfortable? Why are, you, why are we acting like this is the end all be all? We're going home. We're going home, and if it's tomorrow, you know that greeting in the early church was Maran Atha, which means Jesus is coming. It's coming. Maran Atha, he's coming. Like, just a little while longer, it's coming. You see, in the early church, they had the right mind. He's coming. Don't worry. Whenever you make some type of long-term investment, I want you to think, But he's coming. He can come any second. And I'm making myself ready to go home. You know, even when you take a nice vacation, and you go on a vacation and it's enjoyable, you're packing your suitcases and it's it's sad because you're going to miss, but then you realize, ah, home sweet home. I'm going to go home and enjoy the place of my rest. We need to set our minds on things above and not on things of the earth. You're here for a short time. Today, tomorrow, next week, maybe, it could be longer, but I want you to set your minds to today, tomorrow, the day after, I'm going home. So I got to get ready. I got to get ready because it's prepared for me. Imagine Jesus goes, paves the whole way for all of us to go and to enjoy, and we're like, just, just leave us a little bit. We're, we're enjoying here. Let me just stay here. You are an ambassador. You have a mission on this earth. You have to fulfill that mission. And then you're what? You're going home. Where are you at within your mission? Are you fulfilling the mission? God gave you a mission. Maybe it's to raise your children in a certain way. Maybe it's to preach the gospel to somewhere. Maybe it's to do something. You have a mission. And then you're going home. You see, the ambassador 
If the ambassador forgets his mission and comes home and they say, did you, did you do what you were supposed to do? I don't know, I kind of got distracted. I was there and it got comfortable, so I didn't want to make any problems, so I just enjoyed it while I was there. That's not why you were there. You are here on this earth temporarily for a purpose. Don't be short-sighted. Long-term vision. We need a long-term vision. What's going to happen after this life? How do you invest in the kingdom of God? Start by loving. Every time you love, you get another jewel in your crown. When you love your enemy, you get a shinier jewel. You get a diamond. You get another experience or level of glory in Christ. Here on this earth, because we have, God has given us the experience of heaven here when we live the life of Jesus. That's why he says, I am the true way of life. You live my life, you'll experience life. Nothing saddens me more than people tell me they have everything and they're like, what's next, Tabuna? I don't have anything to live for. I'm saying you haven't even started living. You haven't even started. You don't know the first thing. You don't know the first thing to the way to life. It's all about saying, I am my beloved's and he is mine. I'm going to walk in the way that he's asked me. Don't go to stand before the throne of God as he's about to give you the keys to your new mansion in heaven. And what happens? He says, did you do your job? Come home. Did you do your job? I don't know. Nah. Go finish. Do your job. You have a job to do. It's to glorify the Lord. It's to glorify the Lord in your life. When you love, when you show compassion, when you speak up for the truth. By the way, Jesus is not the one that tells the truth. Jesus is the truth. So anything that you say that is against the truth is against what? It's against Jesus. It's not against the sayings of Jesus. Jesus is the truth. So if you live in a lie, you're living against Christ. Because He is the truth. And He is the source of life. It is by Him that we breathe. It is by Him that we live our lives. I pray that we would start designing our home in heaven. Today, go home, get a pen and paper. What do you want your mansion in heaven to look like? It all depends on if you fulfill your call on earth. Your call is to glorify the name of of Jesus Christ on this earth through love through forgiveness through true worship in Christ through being Christ to the world I pray that we the church would be Christ to the world and we would make our way over to our home it's our eternal place of rest where God promised us eternal joy and happiness where there is no grief nor sorrow and they all flee away in the light of God Glory be to God forever. Amen.